Hi everybody, um, I'm Samantha Senevaratna. I'm a cookbook author and food editor and also a food stylist here at Food52. Um, I'm here to talk to you about our Let's Get Scrappy initiative where we give you some fun and creative ideas for using up your food scraps before they even get to the compost bin. Um, so we asked you recently what ingredients in the kitchen you had the most trouble using up. You told us and I'm here. I'm going to show you some fun ways to use them up. We're live, so if you have any questions or comments or concerns, send me a note and I will do my best to answer them as we go, okay? So the first thing that you told us we had trouble, you had trouble using up was buttermilk. I confess I also have trouble using it up. You can freeze it, so that is a good little tip. But if you have leftover buttermilk, a really easy and fun way to use it up is in drop biscuits. Drop biscuits are simple, there's no rolling, there's no fuss, so you just mix up a batter. Probably you have all this stuff in your house already, and then you're ready to go. You probably need 15 minutes, and you can use up your buttermilk. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take two cups of flour in my bowl here, and add my leavening. So this is half a teaspoon of baking soda, and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. We need all that. Make sure that gets in there. A uh, quarter teaspoon of salt, and third of a cup of brown sugar. You could use regular sugar if you want. Brown sugar is just going to add a little more molassesy deliciousness. Um, so this is a good option here. I'm just mixing that in. It's pretty easy. Um, I'm actually going to get my fingers in there because my brown sugar is a little lumpy. It's always fun to use your hands when you can in the kitchen, as long as they're clean. <laughs> Mine are, don't worry. <laughs> okay, uh, I got all my little lumpies out. And now I'm going to cut my butter in. So this is six tablespoons of cold butter. Cold butter is important when you're making biscuits, when you're making pie dough. You want it to be cold because when you get it in the oven, those cold lumps of butter will melt and create steam and make your baked goods flaky and light and that's important. If at any point it gets hot, you're working in a hot room, you're working in the summer, just throw this mixture back into the fridge and let it get cold before you move on. You know, I'm not even gonna mess with this too much. I'm using my pastry blender, but you could also throw this in the food processor and mix it up that way. You could also use two knives. Um, I've also, I mean, I've used kitchen shears before in a pinch, it all works. So you can see my butter's pretty big. I'm kind of gonna leave it big. It's really rustic. That's all I'm gonna do right there. All right, now I'm gonna mix up my wet ingredients. So I have my half a cup of buttermilk. If you didn't have buttermilk, you weren't using it up, you could also just use half a cup of milk with a little bit of lemon juice that you let sit and get curdly. There's my one large egg. And I'm gonna do a little bit of vanilla. Oops, this is brand new vanilla. Who knew? Haha. <laughs> this is the hardest part of this recipe, opening my vanilla. Okay, here we go. Just a little bit of vanilla. And I'm mixing up my wet ingredients. Ooh, my water's going crazy. I'm gonna just turn it down a little. This is for our next. Okay, I turned it down. I'm not so good with these stoves. Okay, that's better. All right, now back to my buttermilk biscuits. Now all these wet ingredients go into my dry mixture. I'm going to use a fork to mix it up. Nothing fancy here. Just get everything evenly moistened. They say that the less manipulation you do of your flour at this point means that your biscuits will turn out nice and soft and tender, which is always what we want. We have a nice shaggy dough here. And that's okay. Oh my god, I love biscuits. They smell so good when they're baking. And the truth is you could probably do this first thing in the morning 
right, and have biscuits for breakfast. It's the easiest thing. That looks pretty good, right? Anybody have any questions for me? I'm happy to answer them. Yeah. Guys, don't forget we are live and we're happy to answer any questions you may have out there. All right, here's my dough. It's looking good. See, that's all I took, it was super easy. Now, I have a parchment lined baking sheet and I'm gonna use a cookie scoop. I think that's the easiest way to portion out my dough. You certainly could just do it by hand if you wanted. These are super rustic, come together fast. This is probably like a third of a cup in my scoop here, but you could make them smaller if you want to serve more people. You could make them bigger. You just have to adjust your baking time a little bit. Uh, we'll just do one sheet for now. Move this one over, this one's a little shaggy. Oop. That looks pretty good. And the final step is a little bit of turbinata sugar which adds crunch and flavor. If you don't have turbinata sugar, you could use regular sugar. You could use sanding sugar if you had it. Um, whatever you've got on hand works, but just adds a little bit of crunch at the end, which is always delicious. All right, so these puppies just go in a 375 degree oven for about 15 minutes. And I'll show you what they look like in the middle rack. While we're taking those out of the oven, you have a question on Facebook. Um, oh. Do you always have to use parchment paper well, when you're making these? You do not always have to use parchment paper, but I'll tell you, it seems to bake a little more evenly when you do. You have less mess to clean up when you use parchment paper. Um, they don't stick, so it generally makes life a lot easier. And the truth is, you can reuse your parchment paper. I reuse mine all the time. So if you're worried about waste, just use it as many times as you can. Flip it over, use it again. If it's not greasy, if there's nothing burnt on it, you can totally use it again. Very fitting with the left scrappy. Totally. We don't want to make more waste. And I think it's probably recyclable, too, as long as it's not uh, waxed or anything like that. So these are my beautiful biscuits. Don't they look good? I am kind of tempted to eat one right now. They're still warm. So look at that. Flaky, soft and tender in the center, but crunchy on the outside. Makes a perfect vehicle for jam, clotted cream. You could even sandwich this with some berries and whipped cream and call it shortcake. Whatever you are in the mood for. Another good thing to put on these suckers would be some lemon curd, which I'm gonna show you how to make right now. Let's just move over. Um, so, Let's get scrappy. Egg yolks. What do you do with leftover egg yolks? There's a lot of things you can do. You can make ice cream, you can make custard, you can make, oh my gosh, some people I know just scramble egg yolks, which is rich and extra delicious. But what I'm going to show you how to do today is make lemon curd, which is super easy, super delicious, excellent on biscuits, and comes together with just a few ingredients. I have my, I'm going to start with my sugar. So this is half a cup of sugar into my pot. Then I have the zest of one lemon, zested. That's gonna add so much flavor. Now, I'm doing lemon curd here, but you could certainly do lime curd, you could do grapefruit curd, you could do a mixed citrus, mixed citrus curd, um, whatever you've got on hand. This is half a cup of lemon juice that I have strained the seeds and the pulp out of. And six tablespoons of butter. It's a lot of butter, it's good. And here are my yolks. So I have three beautiful large egg yolks. You notice I'm just dumping this whole mess into the pot. There are some versions of lemon curd where you have to do things in stages, but this recipe, I think this is an Alice Medrich recipe, it's on foodproofdo.com. Uh, it's super easy because you just dump the whole thing into a pot. One large egg. Trying to make a little space here. And now we're just gonna cook this. So the key is we have these eggs, we don't wanna curdle anything. You want to keep it, bring it up to temp slowly, you know? So, here we go. This stove, I'm gonna put it on medium. Maybe four. And we'll see, you'll watch the butter melt. 
And what we're looking for is a homogenous mixture that coats the back of the spoon. And once it coats the back of the spoon, we know that the egg yolks are cooked, the eggs are cooked, everything's safe to eat, and it's going to be delicious. Sam, while we're cooking that up, we actually have another question about um, the biscuits that was just asked. Okay. Um, Ken was wondering if you sprayed a little bit of cooking oil on top of the turbinado sugar. Do you think that would help to caramelize everything? Ooh, that's a beautiful idea. I have never done that. But you know what you can also do is brush them with egg yolks. If you had an extra egg yolk, you could brush it with cream. Um, before adding the sugar and those things will help it brown and help it shine up a whole egg If you whisk that up with a little bit of water and sprinkle and brush the tops That'll help them be shiny and brown and probably help with some caramelization as, as well um, I've never done oil, but I like that idea. I'm gonna try it And so you normally have egg yolks on hand after separating eggs for a recipe like you're making Mm -hmm. So how would you recommend storing the egg yolks if you have those on hand? If I, so what I do, because this happens to me a lot, making pavlovas on the weekend or angel food cake, um, what I would do is serve, put them into a Tupperware, make sure it has a lid because what happens is the tops tend to get a little bit dry and then um, they're hard to use. So definitely put it in something with a lid. I also put on the top, make sure you write how many are in there because once they break it's kind of hard to know how many you've got left over. Um, so I have a little piece of tape on my egg yolks and every day I sort of cross it out and add uh, new ones. And you can also, I've been told you can freeze them. Does anybody, can anybody verify that? I'm pretty sure you can freeze egg yolks. Um, probably just in an ice cube tray or something like that as long as they're well wrapped and then you could use them whenever. Because in the fridge they probably only last, I don't know, I want to say a week, two weeks once they've been opened. Um, I don't want to keep them too long, but you can definitely smell when they've gone south, so you'll know if that's a problem. Let's see. My butter is still chunky, but it's going to smooth out, I promise. It's pretty good, though. Kind of. And we have another question from Charles on Facebook right now, too. Um, Hi, Charles. He would like to know um, your opinions on if it's better to use real lemons or if there's any uh, better to use bottled stuff for lemon juice. Ah, good question. I am going to tell you, hang on one second while I figure out the stove. I realized I was on the wrong stove this whole time. So that's why my curd was not doing anything. Anyway, um, bottled lemon juice is usually not, I think it is lemon juice with a little bit of citric acid, probably. So it's not super pure. It also doesn't have the same flavor as lemon real lemon, so I think if you're going to make something like lemon curd where you really want it to taste like fresh, beautiful, bright lemons, you want to make it with fresh lemons. Um, you know, that stuff is good for fruit salad or somewhere where you're, when you're in a pinch for lemon juice, but if you're, if you're making lemon curd, I say go for the real stuff. And the great thing about lemon curd is you use the zest and the juice, so you're not really wasting too much. Um, and if you're just using the juice, you could even candy the, the rinds. So, you know, if you're really, really interested in not making them a waste, you could do that. So, definitely invest in some real lemons. Well, we do have a few answers uh, to your question about um, freezing edibles. Ooh. Um, and there seems to be a little bit of dissension among uh -oh. our followers right now. Tell me. Um, Ken says that yes, egg yolks do freeze quite well. Okay. Um, but Michelle says that they do not work. They get too gelatinous, and you have to mix them with sugar, and even then they are strange. Huh. So it looks like it might be worth a little bit of experimentation. Yeah, I'm gonna. Like I mean, well, even if, they, if you have to mix them with a little bit of sugar and something like, I bet you could still use them in something like egg, or well, something like curd, right, where you wouldn't the texture of them wouldn't really matter that much, right? I mean, sure, you wouldn't want to use them in scrambled eggs or something like that, but when you're cooking it, I wonder if you could still get away with it. I will give it a test and let you know what I think. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys chiming in. That's awesome. And That's you it. mentioned that um, you could use only the lemon juice or the lemon juice and the zest. Um, what does the lemon zest add that the juice wouldn't add? Ooh, that's a great question. So. Lemon zest has all the oils, the lemon oils from the fruit, and that adds so much more concentrated flavor. I mean, I basically add lemon zest to everything that I would 
not everything, but a lot of things that I would add lemon juice to. Like when I'm making pesto or something, I definitely add a little lemon zest. When I'm making lots of savory dishes that I would finish with lemon juice, I also add a little lemon zest because that lemon oil is so flavorful and it's gonna add so much more flavor. So all you have to do is invest in a really good zester because that is important. Okay, now we are finally getting somewhere here because I think I finally have this stuff. Maybe I'm gonna call my friend Taylor over here who has a little more experience with these stoves to tell me, did I, did I screw that up? It's the right one. Okay, good, see, we're live. Did I turn it up? We're getting somewhere. We're totally getting somewhere. Yeah. I'm also getting like a nice uh, hot water facial <laughs> yeah, exactly. here from this, but that's always good. It's like summer in the city is coming, so I'm just prepping for that feeling. We're getting somewhere now. Yeah. Cool. Oh, lemon zest. It's a good, it's a really good ingredient. But the other thing to note, if you're using your lemons for lemon zest and you're gonna use the juice another time, take those bald lemons and wrap them in plastic before you put them in your fridge because they dry out really fast once the zest is gone and then they become hard and hard to use. So if you're starting with only using the zest, wrap them in plastic and throw them in your fridge for later because they'll last much longer that way. Let's see. We're making some progress here. Sam, do you ever find yourself stuffing a lot of lemons at one time? Uh, that's a good question. I don't find myself zesting a lot of lemons at one time because it does tend, the zest dries out. So I don't usually zest them too far in advance. I would pretty much just zest them right before I were about to use them. Um, I did just find a little packet of orange zest in my fridge the other day that I wondered what my intention was when I first zested it. I have no idea. But uh, you can, you just have to keep it well wrapped. But I wouldn't do it too far in advance because it really dries out. Well, that's a good, that's a really good point. So Taylor just said if you mix your lemon zest with a little bit of sugar or salt, it'll last a little longer. Um, you just have to remember which one you put so that you don't uh, switch it up, you know. Okay, now we are getting somewhere. So you can see my mixture is starting to thicken up. We're not really at coating the back of a spoon yet. And you can also see there are these teeny little white lumpy things and that is just from what was coated, what was around the egg yolk when I put it in. We don't really care about that though because I'm just gonna strain it right out. So don't stress. The key here though is just trying to catch it before, you know, before any of those egg yolks curdle. But the truth is, I have made lemon curd before where I have curdled the eggs. It happens, it happens to everybody. Just strain it, it's still gonna be delicious. You can still eat it. Here we go, now we're getting somewhere. Mm, this is gonna be good on those biscuits. It smells really good, really lemony. And Sam, you mentioned earlier that you can use other um, forms of citrus for making curd. Totally. Uh, like lemon curd or crazy curd. Would it be a one-to-one -one, uh, substitution for each juice or? Um, I would do a one to one, and you know what I would, if I'm doing a mixed one, I always add a little bit of lemon juice um, because something like an orange curd would be very sweet, orange is a lot sweeter than lemon, so I would always do one to one with, with like another tablespoon of lemon just to bring up the, you know, just balance the flavor a little bit, but it, it is pretty much one to one. I'm trying to think. I might go down on lime zest if I were doing it because lime zest has a tendency to be a little bitter if you add too much of it. So. Maybe if I were making lime curd, I might go down a little bit on that dust, but other than that, I think i pretty much do one-to-one. -one. Oh, here we go. Can you see that it's nice and thick? And I'm gonna take it off here. Let's do that off. And then I can show you, coats the back of the spoon. I can do a line, and it stays nice and strong. So that means my lemon curd is totally ready. I'm gonna send it through this fine mesh sieve. Now it's gonna catch any of those little bitty egg bits or if I curdle the egg yolks just a tiny bit, it's gonna catch anything so that my final egg, my final lemon curd is gonna be nice and smooth. 
We're also kind of straining out those bits of lemon zest, you can see, because they've sort of done their job. They added their beautiful lemon oil to my curd and flavored it nicely, and now they can go in peace and be happy that they did a beautiful thing for my curd. Look at that. Don't ever forget to scrape the bottom, because you lose so much if you forget. It's too good to waste. Okay. Now, it's in my bowl. It's, you know, you can see it's a little loose now, but it's definitely gonna thicken up as it sits. And you could keep this in a jar in the fridge for a while. You could pour it into a pie shell and have sort of a lemon curd pie. But what I wanna do is make sure I put a piece of plastic wrap on it. I want the plastic wrap to touch the top of the curd so we don't form a skin. Same with pudding or custard. Just like that, pop it in the fridge, let it cool. It's gonna firm up and be so delicious. Okay, so that's my lemon curd. Now, we will just move over here. Here, I'm gonna get some of this stuff out of here. Okay, herbs. This happens to me all the time. You buy these beautiful herbs, you have this beautiful bunch with the best intentions, and then they go a little floppy on you in the fridge, and you don't know what to do with them, and you don't wanna waste them. So we have a great idea for you. We make emerald oil. This is a tip from Josh Cohen, our, our test kitchen director here. And he makes this emerald oil. It's delicious, it's beautiful, and it's a great way to use up all your herbs. So here I have some droopy parsley and some droopy chives that I'm gonna make sure I use up. I'm just gonna cut them a little so that they fit into my pot. But the first thing I'm gonna do my little facial water over there. I'm gonna blanch my herbs. So let's come with me, we'll go over there. All right, so I have a strainer in here, boiling water, salted water. We want it to be super duper salty. The blanching step is basically to help this herb stay nice and bright and beautiful and green so that our final green oil is lovely and never brown. I'm making it super duper salty. Salty like the sea, salty like pasta water. And keep it like that. That was just kosher salt. You can use whatever you have though. Don't worry about that too much. All right, so now I'm gonna blanch these puppies. I might have to do it in batches, but. Oh, somebody's calling. All right, here we go. Blanching. And add some more herbs. They just need a second in the hot water. And then I'm gonna shock them in some ice water. You could do this with any tender herbs that you have. Um, tarragon, parsley, cilantro, pretty much anything, thyme even would work. Um, rosemary might be a little tricky just because it has big woody stems, so you know, they might get a little bit stuck in the blender. Their rosemary is also really strong, so a little goes a long way. But pretty much anything else will work. So here, my beautiful herbs are just nicely cooked, very briefly. And now I'm just gonna, mm, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna bring that over there. Sam, you mentioned that you think time would be okay. Uh, are those stems delicate enough for the streamers? You know what's funny? Sometimes you find time that has that beautiful thin uh, stem, and sometimes time is really woody. I, you know, if, depending on what you get, if you get some soft time, throw it in there. If it's woody, I would just pick the leaves off and keep the stems for something else. You know, you could throw your stems in a chicken stock or something like that. Um, so there are other ways to use it, but just sort of see what you get. All right. That is just an ice bath because I want my herbs to cool down completely. There you go. And you can see I, I use the stems. I use the whole, pretty much the whole thing. I just cut off the roots so we didn't have anything uh, dirty in there. But um, I used all the stems. I'm going to throw all those in. We don't want to waste them because they have flavor too. All right, let's see. We're nice and, we're almost cold. I just don't want them to cook anymore. Here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, you could do this if you're making basil pesto. A lot of times people blanch their basil before they make it because that also helps keep the green color fresh. Um, 
Blanching is a good step. So now, something else. Well, I just want to squeeze all the water out of this. Um, yeah, maybe that'll be good. Taylor's going to dump my water for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll just go together. <laughs> we don't need that water anymore. Thank you. Right. Now, we just want to squeeze out all the water. Because that water, we don't want that to dilute our oil. We just want pure herbs. What's beeping? Taylor, what's beeping? <laughs> Is this stove trying to tell me to be careful? It's a very friendly stove. All right. Get all the water out. It's the same thing you do with like zucchini when you're making zucchini bread or something like that. Just We just want concentrated herb, no water. All right. There's that. And you saw how much herb I started with and what that whittled down to. So, you know, you can really use a lot. If you have a garden where your herbs are kind of going bananas and before they turn to seed, you don't know what to do with them, you can make a ton of this oil and save it. It's a great way to have that beautiful herby flavor even past summertime. All right. Every drop. I think I'm getting every drop. I'm doing my very best. Actually, every time I think I'm done, I squeeze it again and then there's more. You could also do this in a dish towel. That might be easy to squeeze out. Okay. <laughs> Good thing there's nobody behind me. All right. What did I put in here? Chives, parsley, cilantro? Just chives and parsley. All right. And we have most of our water out. Just make a little space. And I put them in the blender and I'm gonna turn this on. And this is just a neutral oil I have here, so I think this is just canola oil, but we could do safflower oil or, you know, honestly, if you wanted to add a little more flavor, you could certainly use olive oil or walnut oil or pistachio oil, and, you know, go nuts, whatever you feel like. But this is just nice neutral oil, so we can basically flavor it anywhere we like down the line. Just a heads up, guys, it might get a little loud, so you might want to turn your volume down a little bit if you have headphones <laughs> on. Yes, and I won't be able to talk to you, probably, but we'll see what happens. pesto that I have here. You could throw in some cheese and some nuts, uh, maybe a little garlic and you have a pesto. You could throw in some egg yolks at this point and make like a ton of flavorful mayonnaise if you wanted. What else could you do with this? You could use this as a marinade um, for some steak. You could add a little vinegar and make this a sauce for a finished grilled steak. I mean basically the uh, opportunities are endless with this beautiful stuff. Look at that. Green and delicious. That looks really good. So what I'm gonna do since I'm making emerald oil is strain this and keep just the oil. But like I said, you certainly don't have to do that. Look how good that looks. I mean, I'm frankly, I'm, I'm sort of tempted to just eat this the way that it is. It looks so good. A little salt. Here we go. 
Yeah. So you threw out a three suggestions of neutral oils to use. Uh -huh. um, why would you want to use a neutral oil versus something like an extra virgin olive oil? Well, you know, I did say neutral oil. If you're, you know, if you use a neutral oil, you have more opportunities later to flavor it in different ways. And also a neutral oil is going to keep, you're going to taste your herbs more, right? You're going to taste the herbs that you put in. But, you know, if you're making pesto or something like that and you want to use olive oil, I say go for it. Or, you know, if you want to use a mix olive oil and a little bit of, you know, a finishing oil like sesame oil or something. I mean, that seems like it'd be kind of good, right? You could put a little flavorful oil and then you could use the whole mixture as a marinade or as a sauce or something like that. So, you know, I, I think go trust your guts. Whatever whatever you've got in your pantry, it seems to be, you probably could just make something new and delicious. Why not? You see what I'm doing? I'm just getting all the fibers out of my oil like that. I mean, this looks, I, I mean, doesn't this look good? That actually kind of looks good. I feel like I could put that on pasta and that would be <laughs> sort of delicious, no? Uh, with a little bit of cheese and salt. Yum. And they've already given up all this flavor, right? Um, I mean, that's the idea. They've given up all their flavor into the oil and so you don't need them anymore. Once At this point, it's true, you're kind of just making mush, but I've been known to eat the vegetables after making chicken stock. I think that's, those are like the most delicious vegetables, so, you know, I may, not, I may use this for something. I don't know, don't you think? But, you know, you could also just throw this in your compost and feel good about saving all your herbs. Use it to help to grow some more herbs. Yeah, right? A whole cycle. So I can keep doing this for a while, but you get the picture. Look at this oil, I gotta show you. How good does that look? It's beautiful and green and delicious. I'm gonna just pour it into this jar so you can see it. Mm, that looks so good. I mean, you could stir this into some soup, you could drizzle this over some eggs, you could drizzle it over some poached fish. You know, chicken, whatever you like. And like this, throw this in a jar, make sure you label it so that you remember what it is, because I have that problem myself. Um, it's gonna last in your fridge probably for a couple months, just like this, and you can use it all the time. I and mean, look how much I used, how much I made, so much, and a little goes a long way because it's super flavorful. Yay, so there are some ideas for us for using up your leftovers if anybody has any more questions or anything. I think we're all good. It seems that um, we've really covered a few ideas on what to do today. But guys, don't forget, um, check out the comments. We've pinned a link to Let's Get Scrappy for you to check out more ideas. Uh, Sam, thank you for coming by today to help us use up all of our food scraps. Thank you for